Hey, I'm Amy Fig, and in this video, we are going to take a look inside my latest journal, I'll be talking to you about the techniques that I use in that and why they're so fun. And then we will uh, create a page together, just something really simple and quick. And um, yeah, it'll be fun. So Art journaling is. Um, a practice of writing and creating art to express yourself um, in a book. That's basically like the simple uh, definition of art journaling if you haven't tried it yet. Um, but there are so many layers and layers of, you know, meaning that goes into it. And you can only really experience it if you dive in and try it yourself. No rules. There are only techniques and different styles that you can play with and try and you cannot ever get it wrong. It's always uh, practicing and experimenting. I wasn't able to say a lot of things that I wanted to um, with this voice. And so I used my journal to write about things that I couldn't say out loud and also to create art um, when there weren't any words for what I was feeling and it has been life-changing for me. So um, if you're an introvert like me and you find it hard to say what you really want to say in the moment, having an art journal practice is very beneficial to building your speaking voice and uh, you can get to a place where you can actually say what you want to say in the moment. I know you can because I am living proof of that. So how about we go over to the art table and I will take you on a tour into the journal that I've been working on and you can get excited about um, what we're gonna what we're gonna make later. So uh, I'll meet you over there. All right, here we are at the art table and this is my flower magic journal. Uh, the Let me just describe it to you really quick because this is on sale right now in the Etsy shop. The covers are made out of Bristol paper. So they're, they're paper but and they're sturdy. Um, the binding, uh, the signatures are sewn into a, a very thin cotton muslin and then they're glued in to the book and then this binding is wrapped around um, the outside of it it's like a velvet and it's got a thick lining um i got it at an estate sale it's sturdy and thick and i love the color it's like a like a dark yellow ochre type of color and it's really so pretty i have these on sale in the shop, um, they come in this color, brown and green and purple. Um, the size is perfect for um, creating pages in one sitting. It doesn't take long to finish and I love that. Um, I do writing in it as well as painting. The pages are very thin and uh, crunchy and crinkly. Um, this is just computer copy paper, like the very basic one. Um, but I have painted each page with by using uh, leaves and flowers to uh, drag ink across the page. And it gets these really pretty marks. Um, and it reminds me of like eco printing. So um, every page is like this and it's not only pretty and connecting you to nature in a way, but it is um, allowing you to not feel scared about a blank page. This is perfect for um, beginners as well as, you know, seasoned art journalers. It's just fun to create with when something's already there. It actually can inspire you to you know, make this whole design just around what you're seeing here. So it's really cool. Um, the paper is just so awesome. It feels crinkly and uh, light and fluffy, and it makes it like um, a thick kind of old vintage book, and I really like that feel. 
So let me talk about, uh, I use acrylic paints, like all these little um, craft paints in the craft section of the store are the ones that I've been using lately and they are perfect um, because you just need a little bit. The pages here are so small that you really don't need a lot of paint at all. Um, just side note, Deco Earth Paint from Deco Art is freaking fabulous. Um, if you want to go on their site and read about their um, the process of making their Deco Earth line, they use recycled house paint um, from all over the country. I got a kit, um, a set of colors, and it's called Modern Bohemian. I think that's the name of it. And so I've been using that lately, and it's fabulous. So anyways, um, I use watercolors in here um, and acrylic and collage so this paper is thin so if you're going to use watercolor paint you're you're probably going to need to use it with the least amount of water as possible so this is not this paper is not you know to hold a lot of water um, if you put too much water on it you're going to create holes in it because it's it's really thin so just be mindful of that you can use watercolor in here. It's possible. It's just, we use it like in a more opaque look. Um, I would say that, uh, so this is all watercolor. This is uh, my daughter right here, Lily. I'm um, memory keeping in this one as well. And I'm also just doing a fun collage just for the heck of it. Um, I'm using magazines for these images. Um, I used uh, one of Stampington's magazines, which is called Where Women Create. That's a really good one. They have lots of uh, quotes and beautiful images in them, and it's amazing. Um, these butterflies I have in my Etsy shop. They are in a kit and it's called Kaleidoscope. And I believe there's like 66 butterflies in there um, that you can just purchase, download and print out. And by the way, when you're printing out for art journaling, it's always best to use a laser printer because the other printers, your ink will smear. Um, these are magazine pictures. I blended out the edges here with an acrylic paint and then just collage on top of that. I have reels for all of these pages. If you wanna go and check my Instagram, you can see how I made each one. Um, I'll leave you the link in the description. This is my full moon uh, ritual pocket. And this is so fun to do. I'll write my little intentions here and keep it saved. And then I'll uh, write all about uh, releasing. I'm really into Stevie Nicks right now. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know I'm in my summer boho witchy phase. And that means that I am really into Stevie Nicks. Um, I also, just side note, I collect tambourines. And I have been for a while. I don't have very many yet, but I, I love tambourines. Um, to do something today that your future self will thank you for. So putting fun, inspirational quotes that uh, you resonate with into your journal is always a fun way to fill your page. This image I saw on Pinterest and I printed it out. Um, side note, again, images on Pinterest, you can print out anything and put it in your journal. There's no law or crime there. Um, if you're going to post about it and you know who uh, created the image it's always best to tag them and thank them for the inspiration that's just proper art etiquette 
Um, if you don't know, you can say I don't know. It doesn't. If anyone knows the artist, um, please let me know or give them a shout out here. Um, you know, if that is fine. When you begin to sell artwork that has images that other people created in it, that's where you're going to have to do your research about um, copyright and things like that. So here we have uh, this, again, the Where Women Create. Sometimes that's hard for me to say. That magazine, which you can find it like in Michael's or Hobby Lobby, or, like craft stores. Um, that magazine has the best quotes in it ever. And like, I just love it. This one is from there. Be part of a community of very strong women who have conquered many challenges in their lifetimes. I mean, come on, like, where are you gonna, where else are you gonna get that quote? Um, you can also you like use thrifted books that are, you know, about uh, mindfulness and, you know, um, holistic wellness. You can find, where else? Uh, magazines that are like um, artsy, like Flow or Create or, um, Domino, that's a really good one about their like really artsy um, interior design. I also use Architectural Digest. That's a really awesome one. Um, oh, oh my God, Stevie, Stevie Nicks. Um, this particular spread is for the full moon in Sagittarius, which is my favorite full moon. Well, it's one of my favorite full moons because I'm a Sagittarius. The next full moon in June, which is called the Strawberry Moon, is my other favorite full moon. Oh my God, because I love strawberries and I love the moon. I was focusing on the word expand and expansion and images that uh, symbolize expansion and, you know, thinking of opening and spreading your wings and oh, this, these hands who that are opening and looking for images that are along those lines and so of course I found this perfect one of Stevie this is from um, Pinterest and so is this one I, I changed this image up a little bit um, this is one of my butterflies and you can go Another way to get images, like you can create them yourself, is on Canva. If you're familiar with Canva, you can create images there and print those out. That's really fun. Um, and then this one page back here, which um, again, I have reels on all of these pages, I believe. Um, so if you want to check them out on my Instagram, please go over and do that. Now, I thought that we would uh, just paint a quick little moon. The first thing you do when you're going to paint a moon is you're gonna look around your house for a circle, uh, an object that you can trace around and you're gonna get a circle from it. So depending on what size you want, you just go around and you, tr you can try cups, bowls, um, bottles, lids, anything you can find. A lot of times the paint bottles that you have might be a good size. Um, Another good one is these uh, rolls of ribbon that you might have. Here's another great uh, little supply you could get at the Dollar Tree, this glitter ribbon. It's also sticky. So, and it's just so pretty. It comes in a few different colors. I love it. So let's use this size. And you want a pencil to trace, trace your circle. And I don't know how easy this is going to be with the ribbon coming out, but let's see. So you just trace this. And um, you're going to give yourself a base color. So normally for like a realistic looking moon, it would be gray. Use like a, a mid tone of whatever color you're, you're going for. So, hmm, how about we use, well, let's use purple since I already have that one open. 
So this is what I mean by mid-tone. This is a mid-tone of purple. This is a light tone of purple. Um, I don't have a dark purple in front of me, but you know, you get the point. It would be way darker than this. It would be like, um, yeah, I don't have it, but it would be a very dark, dark purple. So we're going to use the mid tone and the light tone. That's all we need right now for our moon. And if you have a paint palette, that would be ideal. And we just fill in our circle. So working on these thin pages, we don't want to put too much paint. We don't want a thick layer of anything in here. We want like a medium layer. <laughs> and as you can see, another reason why I love this journal is because it's practice. Um, and there are bumps and lumps in the pages and that's okay. Let's see if I can't get that. Okay, so we have our mid-tone on there and now we're gonna use our lighter tone and I just I have this paper here, so I'm going to use this piece of paper as my palette. Let me see if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's going to be my palette. Let's get this out of the way. I'm going to take the lighter color. And I didn't wipe any of that. Um, first color off of my brush and that's okay. I'm going to take some lighter color, get it on my brush, and then I want to kind of rub or um, blot some of it off. And then I'm just going to kind of skim around on the surface here and just play with that technique. So load up the brush, the lighter color, and then kind of blot it off. And then I'm just swirling, load it up, blot some off. This is, and no water is being used. This is referred to as a dry brush technique. Some paint, blot it. The idea is that you don't want to go in like with a big hunk of paint. You just want a little bit to, uh, scratch kind of over the surface. Another thing I want to mention is that holding the way you hold your brush uh, makes a difference. So if I hold my brush way up here, I have less control of what's going on. It just think of like a pencil. When you hold your pencil down lower, you have complete control of what's happening. But if you hold it way back here, you really don't. So now I'm, I'm gonna, I'm experimenting and I'm adding a little more paint. Now I'm not blotting it off. I'm just loading up a little bit more. And I'm just trying to um, cover the darker area around the edges and kind of blend it out so once I have it looking this way I'm gonna go back with a little bit of the dark or the mid tone I'm gonna add a little bit blot some of it off I'm gonna go back to the dry brush technique a little bit blot and now I'm just gonna randomly See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight on. I'm gonna randomly add more paint. I'm turning my arm and being mindful of the curves that happen on a ball. So the the brush strokes will follow the angle like this, and then you you just blend them in.
this takes a look, you know, it takes practice. I've done it quite a few times. And so it's just familiar to me and it's back and forth. We're going to go back one more time with the, oh, do I still have some? With the light tone. And you can do this with any color. I recommend that you choose colors that are, you know, in the same family, like these two purples. So now I'm kind of blotting and keeping in mind that I want some of the darker or the mid-tone purple to show. Whoop. So see, I, I feel like I put too much, so I'm just going to wipe my brush off. Now I'm just going to use that and kind of blot, turn my brush for the curve of the moon. And then, you know, just take a look like, what do I think it needs? I feel like it needs maybe a little more dark in some areas. It also can help if you have a picture of the moon you, that for a reference, if you have that near you as you're doing this, you can, it can help you to know where to put shading. Um, just remember this is practice and as you keep practicing this, you'll feel more comfortable to add new things, try new things with it. So there's my moon. I'm going to leave it like that. Um, you could do so many things with this. Um, but one thing that I would like to do right now is just put a little face on it, which is very simple. Um, I think I'm going to use white. Something that's really helpful to have with you when you're art journaling is a blow dryer. And so I'm going to dry this really quick and then we'll move on to the next layer. So before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the glue that I use in this journal for all of those collage pages that I showed you is this Fabri-Tac glue. And it's also the same as the three in one. I really don't know the difference. I can't tell the difference when I'm using them in my journal, but they're equally fantastic. Okay, so back to this moon. Let's just do a fun, little face uh, just for funsies I'm going to take a really small brush and just paint some eye shapes I'm not too concerned about making these uh, exactly the same. It's just for fun. Um, I'm going to do a little nose. And some little lips. I'm using the same colors that I've been using. I'm definitely going to go more in depth with some face tutorials here in the future. So um, leave me a comment down below if you'd be interested in learning about how I draw and paint my faces. I would love to share that with you guys.
And then let me get, oh yeah, this is that lighter tone of purple. I'll blend this in here. Using that same lighter tone of purple, and make her an eyelid. Okay. And just kind of give her some eyelashes. Okay, so now we're going to blow dry this. It's very important to blow dry between layers. Uh, so I'm gonna go switch to marker or pen to do some outlining and I need for this to be completely dry or else my marker will not work on it. So let's blow dry. I'm gonna use a Sharpie fine point pen for this. You can get these at the Dollar Tree, by the way. And I'm just gonna do some outlining of the eye. I'm gonna go right down the middle. Uh, that line that I made here. Again, these are not meant to be perfect. You're just experimenting to kind of outline the eyelid. And then I will give her an eyebrow. Okay, and then I'm going to give her that um, highlight white dot in her eye. Um, just want to put it in the same exact spot on both eyes. And then I also like to do like a highlight down here. And sometimes I do a little one on the nose and then also maybe a little bit in the lip area and then kind of blot the lip makes it look a little glossy oh she's cute so that's that's just a quick little moon for you to try and practice Keep in mind, I've been doing this for, you know, my whole life. I've been drawing and painting forever. This is a doodle for me. I've done it a million times. So if you make one and you are not liking it, you can paint over it. You can, uh, let's say I really don't like this one. I'm going to try again right here. And the one that I don't like, I can, you know, use any image in my, um, that I find in magazines or whatever and just like put it right on top of it. I can't find one right now, but you know, like something pretty that I really love. I just glue it right on top of that and no one will ever know that I muffed up a moon. Okay. 
Anyways, I hope that you uh, enjoy this. Thank you for joining me today. And hopefully, you know, you're inspired to go and jump into your own journal this weekend and create something fun. Um, I look forward to seeing you next Friday. And if you like my content and you want to see more of this, please consider subscribing and liking this video. And you can check me out on Instagram for daily inspiration. Um, otherwise, I will see you back here next Friday. And um, check in, in the description for all the links for anything that you are curious about that happened throughout this video. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.